uh, and always love to have the back and forth from the community uh, as we go through these uh, pretty volatile economic times. Laurel, I know we have a cup. Our, our mastermind is going to be coming up this December, and that's kind of the theme of what we're going to be talking about. So just in general today, talking a little bit about money mindset, what you're doing to end the year appropriately, but better yet, you know, starting 2021 on the right foot. So with that, I'll turn it over. Laurel, how are you doing today, ma'am? I'm good. It's, uh, I cannot believe it's December 1. All right. Where did this year go? And uh, a lot of people want to write it off. And here's the good news as a business owner, you're going to get to. Um, there's a lot of just writing things off. The whole uh, NCAA, my son is an athlete there, but every NCAA athlete gets to write this year off as if it didn't exist. It's not a red shirt year. It's just a buy year. If you wanted to play, you played and uh, got some good reels. So there's a lot that's going to be written off. Um, what we are going to be doing to end of the year, we've been actually working on it. If you heard us even as early as August, we said, you know, November 15th is probably really like when, if you don't have your government agency, you know, appointments booked, the chances of getting it done are pretty slim. So now it is a firefight to the end. If you're not incorporated, you're going to miss huge opportunities. So you're going to hear us continuing to say, call Scott, call Scott, call Scott. If you want to, um, you know, Thomas put his calendar link. Um, so we can do some like literally you cannot apply for a lot the the stimulus that's going to come out regardless who stands as president there somebody's going to put out another stimulus package right so whether if you're not incorporated and have payroll you're going to miss the PPP if you're not incorporated you're going to miss the SBA there's tons of benefits plus the tax benefits of writing off this whole year you got to be incorporated cannot be a sole proprietor so that is like a 911 uh, screaming from the rooftops and then the 15th uh, of this month, we're going to do um, really the start of what we call New Year, New You. So I don't even know, Thomas, how many years have we done this? Like a decade, maybe 15? I would say at least 15. I've been here for almost six years now, and we've done it every year since I've been uh, working with the team. And so what we do is we don't just go, um, you know, hide away from the holiday. A lot of people do that. We don't. It is actually a time where, um, you know, business specials really start. Like we started our, our business specials for Black Friday, Cyber Monday yesterday, and then it'll continue to go through the holiday. And uh, it's a time to really pick up some great business. It's a time to, for us, make sure that you end your year right and start it right. So from January 15th, we'll put a big... Uh, pin note on our millionaires in training a Facebook group as well. The 15th on that broadcast will be more specifics and uh, what you really have to get done. You've got two Tuesdays left. And then on January 5th, we have this cool process I take you through um, on start stops, continues on values, on designing your year. And we're going to have a longer broadcast then on January 5th. So it's about a 21 day process we take you through. Um, on how to end the year and begin another year. So it's a cool process if you've gone through it. A lot of, we have a lot of repeat uh, business on that one. A lot of people come back and uh, it's just a great, great experience during those 21 days. So mark your calendar. Those of you, as Thomas said, that are in the big table mastermind, we are meeting then on the 16th and the 6th, the days after. Um, so it is not pick one or the other. Uh, we're going to be doing conversation circles. We have all sorts of stuff planned for the big table. And uh, again, how do you specifically end your year at a much more elevated conversation? And how do you get 2021 right? Um, so exciting times, lots coming up in the next uh, little bit. As other, like I said, a lot of people wind down, we wind up. So we're going to be very, very active with you and need you playing. The other thing going on, and I don't think I've even announced it live. I know some of the folks on our team um, do know, but there are states that are revolting uh, against their governors and mayors. Um, and uh, there is someone local I met with yesterday. Um, small businesses are getting pummeled by the way they're getting treated. Um, and you can't just say restaurants. Restaurants are obvious. You can't operate at 25%. And um, there's been a lot of strategy and work we've done on pricing, on, uh, you know, if, you, if, if a restaurant sells liquor uh, and alcohol, they have a little advantage, honestly, because the margins are so high. But food margins typically aren't that high. So how to condense kitchens, how to condense staff, how to condense, you know, menus. Um, the whole thing's killing small businesses. Um, hair salons, chiropractors, uh, auto body shops, you name it, small business, uh, medium-sized business is getting hit. So um, 
you're going to see us lead. I'm going to lead with this uh, a gentleman, this lawyer out of, you saw him, Joey Gilbert was on my podcast and we are going to lead a, an effort to get small and medium sized businesses back a lot more of the rights they need to stay alive or this thing is, they're not going to make it. I mean, most small businesses, I mean, they had a hell of a time making it these nine months much less, uh, or eight months really has the impact of been what March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, nine months. Um, and they, I don't think a lot of businesses have it in them to do it again. Um, <clears throat> and a stimulus, as long as you're incorporated, can keep you alive. And that's our goal and strategy is to keep working with you to make sure you do stay alive as a small business. So we're excited. And as uh, Joey puts more of that together, he's going to go county by county. Uh, a lot of counties in California are going to pick it up. Arizona, actually, Adam's picking it up, where a lot of the lawyers are finally cracking the code on um, just some relief to the small business owner on especially the lockdown and the limitations that are arbitrarily put out there without a lot of statistics. So interesting and exciting, actually. I think it's going to be great, uh, given that we're huge entrepreneurial advocates. Um, our goal is to keep you in business and not have a hell of a 2021 uh, where you're so broken, uh, which is part of our conversation today, where you're so broke that you know you don't even have the energy to want to go make the money that you need to make. So stay tuned. More of that will be coming, uh, coming soon. Excited about that. Uh, Chris Klein will also be around on a lot of our broadcasts. Uh, Bitcoin digital currency is skyrocketing and I'm um, going to take some interesting runs as well as the market always does some interesting activity through the holidays. So always stay tuned, mark your phone, put us in 12 noon every Tuesday for our broadcast so we can uh, keep you updated. So um, let's, well, I want to acknowledge, you guys want to go into the mindset work first. And I got out my expression of your power because um, this is the book that I did a lot of work with Bob Proctor. Um, I'd say, uh, even though uh, we wrote it in 2002, um, I got to tell you the funny story how this uh, got written. I had never really published before. I was just, you know, people were following me out around doing real estate uh, tours and playing the cash flow game. And I'll never forget, Bob said, let's meet in Chicago for a mentoring session. I'm like, why are we going to Chicago? And so we ended up going to uh, Nightingale Conan and we stood for 10 hours eye to eye over a huge broadcast and whiteboards and we wrote this book and we recorded this book. And so that was done sometime in 20, uh, 2002, don't even remember the day, but it was quite an interesting experience to be with a mentor and he just like kept jamming. So that's why when I jam content with you guys, I, this is how I got taught, right? You just talk it, you stand there, you write about it and then you transcribe it and somebody makes it look like this, which is an amazing little book. But inside of here, and we kind of start with this, um, you know, a lot of people, I think, use the mindset as an excuse. Now, there's some structures we're going to talk about, but, um, you know, like I said in the secret, money comes easily and frequently. And when I said that, you know, I was working with Bob early, it was probably, I don't know, 1997, 98. And it literally will feel like a lie. Some of the stuff we're going to ask you to do to really shift your mindset is going to feel like a lie. And then we're going to tell you the truth, which is make some money. Because when you make money, your mindset has to shift. So um, I'm going to just uh, introduce. So you guys know Thomas. You know Adam. If you don't know Adam Kipnis, he uh, also co-leads and instructs our marketplace that we're heading into this week. We're doing another one, our meetup of marketplace. So why don't you guys tell a little bit about kind of your mindset story? Was there really a story to tell? I mean, mine was really you know my Nebraska story, where you know working hard was my my you know I'd say mindset, but making money was my fastest answer to cure all of that. What about you guys? Kind of give a little history to your mindset stories and what happened. Adam, why don't you go first, sir? All right. Yeah. Um, mine is a, a little bit more your traditional path. I grew up in a family where I am the only person without an advanced degree. My mom's got two masters. My dad's got two masters. My wife has 13 letters behind her name. My sister, my cousin, mm -hmm. uh, also masters. Um, all the men in the family, aside from my dad, were all um, doctors or attorneys. My other brother and my sister are both attorneys. So everyone in my family has advanced degrees. College was not a, um, an if or a when, it was a where. So it was just always, where are you going to college? Get a traditional job. Um, almost no one in my family was entrepreneurial, except my grandfather built his own house. He built a building. He uh, started his own medical practice, but it wasn't from a really entrepreneurial mindset. It was a, I've got money. 
And this is what you do. If you're a doctor, you need an office. So why don't you just build one? He never thought about it or taught it entrepreneurially, taught about it financial. So my whole upbringing was I needed to know the markets. I needed to understand how finances, but no one ever talked to me about making money. Making money was going to be something that somebody else paid me for. And the smarter I was, the better educated I was, the more money I would make. That's how I was raised. It wasn't until... Um, I'm going to say 2010, um, post financial crisis, I worked in financial services. Not only did I lose 75% of my money, I also lost my job at that time. Being in financial services and being invested in the markets was a terrible place to be yep. in that time frame. Uh, so I got hit from every angle and honestly, my wife saw something on, on Facebook and we went to a seminar and it was our first introduction to personal development, to seminars, to money-making activities. Fast forward two years, that's when I went to another event, met Laurel, got um, introduced to the community and really started having this conversation about money, yeah. not making it necessarily, or not earning it, I would say, but making it, creating it, understanding it. And that's where it really started for me was really um, you introducing me to the conversation, the earlier seminars introducing me to working on myself and money being a big part of that. So that's where it really came. Yep. Awesome. How about you, Thomas? Uh, Where's yours uh, come from? Had a little bit of a different background. Uh, my family had a lot of entrepreneurs in them. And so I always saw that as something that I knew I wanted to do. Um, whether it was working in, in small locally owned restaurants and working closely with the owner, the local chef, or my father's uh, IT business, my mom's tax prep, prep business, always had that model and always knew I wanted to do it. The conversation that we never had, though, was truly valuing what it is you do to earn that money. And I think that when that's one of the things I see a lot with people who come into the community the first time is they know they want to own a business. They know they have a product or service but they're totally undercutting their pricing and undervaluing what it is they do uh, in service to other people. And so that was one of the things um, that I think I first learned when I came to the community. Um, you know, before I'd always read, you know, Tim Ferriss was one of, of the, the authors I like to read um, the most. Also uh, Chris Bolo uh, with the hundred dollar star up some of those books. Um, but before I got to the hundred K challenge, I never understood that, you know, when it came to making money versus earning money, you know, I, I, I always want to create a business, but I didn't realize I created a job. And so that mindset comes from of putting together, not only am I going to make money, but I'm learning, I'm going to put something together that can sit outside of myself and do that accordingly. And I think that was the biggest mind shift, uh, mindset shift I had going to one of the seminars, Chicago, 2012 joining the 100K Challenge, actually becoming active in the community and understanding there's a totally different mindset if you want to do this the right way. Yep, yep. And I think a lot of people realize that, um, you know, and I started using this term in the last, uh, I used it a long time ago and I just kind of remembered it and brought it back, which is a lot of people have inherited money beliefs and money behaviors, right? So again, if you, if you just heard all of our, our stories, it all comes from your family. So unless you consciously say, I'm not doing it that way. And again, it's not about making them wrong or whatever they did. They did what they did. You're here now as a, an adult with choice. So what do you want to do and how do you want it to be? So you can live the rest of your life in, you know, whining about your mindset or make some money. And, uh, and that is our fastest answer. Um, so I'll give a, a little bit of uh, the lessons about this is, you know, where I really got it is Bob actually sent me off to a personal development camp, you know, I think Adam, you know, up at uh, the Cy Ranch, right? And yep. they would teach us, you know, be, do, have, and we'd leap from these poles and we do all sorts of trust falls and all sorts of 10 days of, you know, putting yourself through hell and, you know, breaking through. And they kept teaching this thing called be, do, have. You want to be a certain way. So it was all about, you know, your beingness. And then you get to do different things because you're being different. And then you get to have a great life. And it always didn't, I mean, it never, it was like interesting. It never sat well until I really came back home and really looked at what I was doing with money because making money was never 
that big of a problem because out of necessity at 17, I started my personal training business. Um, and so I could just turn that on and off. Right. And then now in coaching, you know, you can kind of turn that off on and off. You can turn events on and off. So when you have the confidence and you know how to make money, it changes a lot. And so then you just kind of turn up the spigot and say, right. When I wanted, you know, to buy my airplane in 2007, I said, I got to turn up the, you know, company's got to make 40, $50,000 extra to pay for that. So then it became a, how do we make more money to pay for what we want in a very different way. Um, and then I started, yeah, I obviously started teaching it and we get great results with it. Um, if you go through more of a theory of how to do it, um, literally, I mean, Bob and I argued, negotiated, thought about this, um, but here is our, <laughs> um, our workbook. And so this is expression of your power. I told Thomas to put it in the, um, and this isn't like we're coming out to do a big sales thing, um, but it's an obvious book. And if you don't have it, some of our longest standing clients still read it today and still listen to it. So it is on, there's an audio. Um, I do encourage you to get the whole workbook. Um, I think because it comes out of our warehouse, we still have those old fashioned CDs that come with it. If you don't have a CD player, you can toss them. You get the audio from us, but you want the workbook. I think for those of you that are more creative and we call it the creative strategic process. And literally, um, you know, Bob and I dissect it on a board and then went to uh, the, the microphone and recorded this. And we go back to the board and we say, so how did it happen? What did he do to me to have me cause, you know, that shift? And part of the shift was just atrophy. And I got to say that. So in addition to making money, then you atrophy your conversation about your mindset. So you just stop saying, I have a mindset issue. I have a behavior issue. Because again, what you give your attention to, you're going to get more of. So you don't, and it's the same we teach you about income and, and debt. If you notice all of our planning forms, we have income and assets. So we want to focus on growth. We don't focus on what you don't have and what you owe other people. So yes, it's part of the formula, but we don't give it any attention. So just the way that the whole work has been designed, it will get you there faster. And the fastest thing is our marketplace. When we get you making money, like really, really quick, you, you got you, you got a shift. So I don't know, Adam and Thomas, what do you guys want to add about that? And uh, we have our winner out there again, Godwin, I was going to bring you in later, but if you want to add to any shift that you might've had mentally going through our workshop, because you did win. So you had to make some money to win. Thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> so uh, if you want to think about that, you are welcome to contribute yeah. to our conversation about what shifted for you. But Thomas and Adam, I'll stay with you for just a moment. Like what was your, you know, what was your your big thing? I mean, to me, it's just, yeah. you make it and you stop atrophy, like totally stop giving any attention to to things you just don't want to do or the negative. Yeah, and to me, I think that was the biggest thing was you know the first year I did my agency, um, you know we did we didn't do that well, and I think part of it is understanding that success is not an accident. Success is something that can be planned, and if you shift your mindset that way, that if you work hard, but also smart, that you can have a reasonable chance of success as, as opposed to it like, you know, winning the lottery or just needing to have good luck that you are worthy of that money. If you make that mindset shift as to, you know, how am I going to do it? That makes it a lot easier. And Laurel, that's why when, you know, when we talk about the revenue modeling at, at the workshops, at the live events, when we go back out, that to me is the most important lesson people can have, right? Because as you talk about your bead you have, it's a question of, well, what do I want to have? And what's that going to cost? And then working backwards, how am I going to get there? So it's not this, you know, this, you know, accident or, you know, this unsolved mystery as to how it's going to happen. It really becomes a question of talking to, you know, X amount of people and understanding that that really is how you make it happen. So to me, it's understanding not only that you're valuable with the money, but if you break it down, you can, you know, path, your, you can create a path to success fairly consistently. Yeah. Adam? No, agreed. And, you know, I think that there are rules to everything we do. And a lot of people think that making money is this scary thing out there. No, there, there are just honestly rules to it, just like there are rules to um, driving the speed limit or there, there are rules to, to building a house, right? There are about money as well. And I think there are two things for me that were big shifts um, over the last really 10 years. Number one is if I don't talk to people about what I do, I don't offer them my services, I am hurting them, right? It's a mindset of, and I don't even like to, to necessarily use the word mindset. It's if, if, if somebody needs something yeah. and I don't offer it to them, I could be in effect ruining their life. If somebody needs to make more money, if someone needs to structure their business, 
if somebody needs help with their marketing and I don't tell them about it because I'm, I don't want to bother them. I'm afraid of asking for money. All of these things that go through our minds, you need to shift your thinking to say, if I don't do it, I am hurting them. Yep. Rather and than I want to help you. Everybody wants to help. If you don't offer it, you're hurting them. That's, so that's one big mindset shift for me. And the second thing for me was um, the buyer versus seller mentality. When we're buyers, a lot of times we disassociate the cost with the product. We can talk about value and the reasons why we spend money on things, but people go to Starbucks and spend four bucks every day on a coffee. They don't even think about it. If that same person were to ask somebody for $4 for their knowledge, chances are they wouldn't do it, right? So as, as buyers, we just say, oh yeah, a car is 25 grand or whatever. A pair of shoes is a hundred bucks. Starbucks is four bucks. We don't think about it because we don't associate the thing with money because it's not scary to us. It's do we have the money? Is it worth it to us? On the sell side, people start to say, well, I don't know if it's worth it. What if they say no? Well, they'll ask me, all of those things. So look at what you do as a buyer and just shift that and do that same thing as a seller. Those were two huge changes for me in how I went about just doing things, not even thinking about things, just doing things. Yep. Godwin, anything you want to add from the workshop? You just attended, you won. Congratulations. We'll uh, acknowledge you uh, more as we uh, continue our, our call. Uh, but yeah, what, thank you very what, much. What, what shifted for you? Um, actually, it was pretty much trying to break off from the comfort zone, as I call it. Personally, my knowledge and where it is that I've been able to do for my life, I've trained professional athletes to the Olympic Games, Soccer World Cup champions. I have a master's degree in health and fitness. And so when I talk about fitness, people always tell me they've never heard it spoken that way before. <laughs> you know. And so just like Adam was saying now, I feel that if I don't go out of my way to share my knowledge with more people, I'm hurting them as well. And so during that challenge, I decided I was going to definitely reach out to as many people as I could. And that was how I won from just picking up the phone and calling people that I would ordinarily not have called, you know? So that was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So was it, um, was it like, I'm going to say the word scary or like, I mean, you know, we coach you to get your courage on, right? Just to pick up the phone. You don't know people, but to Adam's point, I think it's one of the most valuable things we've ever, ever taught anybody is that gift. If you really know that you're going to serve somebody, and I had no idea your credentials. Congratulations on all those, you know, massive you. world titles. Good for you. Um, <laughs> you got to go to the table. My God, we could make you so much money. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, you are, <laughs> you're right in our wheelhouse. Um, well, because you could train other professional <laughs> athletes. And believe me, I, like they get paid a lot of money to train. Um, yes. Really, really uh, get paid tons. Um sure. But what I'm hearing from you, it was, uh, was it more like scary or like concerning to pick up the phone or was it more like, what was the thing that kind of led you? Was it that you knew you were providing service? What was the kind of teaching that we got through to you that you were just willing to go for it? Yeah. For me, it wasn't about being scary. When I was in school, I was president of my student association. So I've always been in front of people talking. Yeah, so it was more of, I've always wanted to wait for everything to be perfect before I make the move. <laughs> yeah. And so during that training, from everything that you said and what Thomas said, it was like, hey, guys, today's work is this. We're doing a sales call. Pick up the phone and start calling people. I'm like, okay. And that was it. <laughs> well, and what I love about, you know, I and I... It is what we teach the way we teach it is now you could do this every day, right? You do this yes. every day. You can never complain that you don't know how to make money. Um, you just pick yes. up the phone and you start calling. Um, and money's everywhere, especially when you know. I think, you know, it's interesting. We could do a little vote. Yeah, now that we're, you know, kind of digging into this a little more is I think that people are more concerned, like you said, not only about perfection, but that they're not going to fulfill very well. What do you guys think? I, I would think that that's almost more of their caution is like, oh my gosh, yeah. if I actually sell something, it's like, oh shit, I have to go fulfill it. And so maybe they're just yeah. not confident in their giving of what they're doing. What do you guys think? I, we don't talk about it a lot during the marketplace. It's, we're not doing a mindset thing during the marketplace, even though it's heavily affected, but I wonder I, if that's part of their caution. What do you think? 
I think that's part of it. I also think the fact that that they, in some ways, like Godwin said, you don't have to wait till everything's perfect. You just need to get out and do it. But I also think there's just that fear of rejection it is the, you know, if I have to try and sell something and someone says no, you know, that there's this big negative energy associated with it. You know, and the, and the news is you're in the same damn spot you are right now. You still don't have what is you want. <laughs> so just move on yeah. and, you know, go on to the next one. Right. And I think that is also, yeah. you know, a mindset shift is understanding that if you do these sales calls, you talk to people accordingly, you can only get better. You can only go up because you're not selling them right now. You're not serving them right now. Um, so that to me is what I think is, you know, part of it. Now. And I, I think, it, you know, from a mindset point of view, something you just said there, Thomas, just struck me is, you know, if you think of it as a sales call, most of the people listening, most of the people in the world are much, le much less likely to do it. If you're having a conversation with somebody, very different energy, very different feeling for most people out there. So if you're worried about sales calls and you don't think you're great at sales and all of the things that we tell ourselves about making money in sales, if you just have conversations with, what do we say? 21 people per day is going to lead to two sales, gets you to a hundred grand. It's almost impossible not to. Yep. Take the sales piece out of it. If you have 21 conversations a day, yep. and now it's so easy, everyone's at home and everyone gets messages in many different ways. You can message via text, you can message via Facebook, you can message via LinkedIn, you can message via WhatsApp, you can pick up the phone and call, you can use the message to get to a call. It is so easy yep. to reach people today to have a conversation. What are you up to? Start doing that. Do that 21 times a day. And don't, for the first week, don't worry about the sales piece of it. Just get used to having 21 conversations a day and listening to what people say they might want, what they need, what they're doing, what their problems are. If they mention anything that is not good in their life, I wish I didn't put on my COVID-19, you know, right? Or um, I, I'm not making enough money or I'm worried I'm going to lose my job. Any of those negative things that people are saying, or I can't wait for 2021, I want to make more money on the positive side. That's what you're going for. You're not going to sell them something. You're going for them to give you something that they want or need, and you can ask a question about it. What are you doing around that? How is it working for you? What else have you tried? For me, have you ever worked with a coach before to help you get there? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Now that gives me a very directional way to go, right? It's not about the sales piece that comes at the end. It's the conversation. So think about it as a conversation when we're talking about the mindset side. Yeah, and just starting, like you said, listening for what someone needs and notice. And, and again, we teach you the ask to last. So for those of you that haven't gone to the workshop, um, again, we're doing a huge Cyber Monday special $37 tickets um, as we head into this Thursday and Friday. So like, come like, buy a ticket and give it to some of your friends and family. Uh, the minute that people get like, you're, you're leading a very directional conversation. So your point, Adam, I say, do your 21 calls, but be very directional about it. Be in that ask, notice when you get yourself out and just practice that ask, tell, ask, like you said, and skip the sales part at the end. So do the ask and the tell, uh, but just get used to listening for other people in a curious serving way. Uh, it'll change your life. It'll change your life with money. It'll change how you do it. It works. And if, if you do that 21 a day, five days in a row, that's what, 110, yep. give or take, conversations. If you have 110 conversations, week two, you'll be asking for the sale midway through because you'll know exactly where to do it. Yep. I mean, it's it's going to be natural. Yes, I can help you with that. Or would you like to know how I could help you with that? Those things will come naturally. Have the conversation. I think that's what Godwin did. And that's what we struggle with in the marketplace. A lot of people... We'll do five or six calls. They're still nervous about it. The marketplace is a super friendly room. I mean, you're picking up the phone knowing somebody is going to ask you for money. <laughs> I mean, it could not be easier. Um, yet some people still tr struggle with it. So that's what we try to get through. And I'm glad that God, when it worked for you, it's worked for so many others. Um, what have we done this nine or 10 times? There's been and people making two, three, four grand every single time to a yep. room of people they don't know. Sometimes they didn't know what they were selling going in. Um, the mindset will come with confidence. I think Eileen put it in the, in the chat, or I don't know if everyone can see the chat or that just comes to us, but Eileen put it in the chat that the more confident you are, then 
the easier it is to ask for money for your services. Just like if you go to the mechanic, the mechanic knows you're there to give him money or her money to fix your car. There's an inherent confidence in I'm asking you for money and you know it. So we just need to think like that mechanic. Exactly. I would say yes. you know, your sales are like coffee. You know, you're going to walk in, you know, you're going to pay, you know, your, your coffee. There's no weird sales energy about it. So when you start living your life and I'm going to, I'm going to give it a, a different word uh, is I don't think it's mindset. I think it's an attitude. When you start living your life from that attitude of, I want to serve other people and I want to help them. And then, then you get the confidence and knowing that what you do is a really good result which Godwin, that's probably be some of my first coaching to you is start documenting your results with people and uh, what you okay. do for them and getting them to do testimonials, just like we want, you know, I want you to go out and do a Google, a Facebook and a Yelp, you know, testimonial for us. Um, okay. Right. And then we give yes. you a bit more free stuff for doing that. So um, I don't, if Jordan's out there, Thomas, if you have that link to do reviews, why don't we go ahead and put that up and uh, you're welcome to take that God one and do the same thing. Ask your people as they get a okay. result from you to go give you testimonials. Then you start building that following even more and more. And at some point you're going to raise prices, right? Because I think that's probably an issue. You probably aren't uh, got your prices yeah. that high. Thomas, I also don't want yeah. to lose this in the chat. Somebody wants to know where the affiliate ad for the $37 is. Do you have that and you can put that up or so they can get that? Um, one thing I just want to point to back to the workbook, just so you understand what's going to happen. I uh, made up a principle called RALT, which is results, action, language, and thinking. Because most people want a, a new result and all they do is circle around the same, like looking at the action around the result versus really starting to deep, you know, to really dig down deep. You know, when, um, when I called the company originally, like live out loud, it was about conversations with money. So literally, I mean, I can hear your conversation and whether you uh, have fear around debt, fear around making money, fear around investing, just through your conversation, you're going to speak it because I know what I'm listening for. And that's the same that you need to be doing whatever you're an expert in. You need to really train your ear for listening, like Adam said, to where they have a problem. So like, I mean, just the basic stuff, if I need to make, or I need to get out of debt. What I know that means is you need to really learn to make some money and you need to manage your spending in a different way, but you're not gonna live within your means. I hate that saying, because that's restrictive. Mm -hmm. So the Ralt principle is a huge part of the first chapters in the book. And then this creative strategic process, I just wanna go through a few of the steps. The first one is really um, a lot of Bob Proctor's work, right? which is the subconscious mind. And you can see through language and you can see through their result, what's really going on subconsciously. So there's an immediate tie for those of us that have a trained, you know, I say I and consciousness to do it. Uh, when you're not as conscious or aware, the things, I mean, do a basic, what I call T-sheet is some action from, you know, today's call. A basic T-sheet is, you know, what are the things during the day or the week, you know, spend a day, maybe spend the week and notice what you're spending your time on and what you're spending your thinking on, right? Is it very, is it critical thinking? like criticizing yourself all the time? Is it strategic problem solving where you're you know, forward thinking? Like where's your thinking at? Is it more reactive all the time? Is it generative all the time? How do you do that? And make a list of the kinds of things you say to yourself, right? And how many times you say I can't or you say no. And so literally that's your present belief. So that's kind of by number three, we go through this whole subconscious training in the book. And then your present belief system is what's happening today. And then we go through this whole cycle of teaching you how to, you know, hear, gather information and know, right? So it's not by number six. And then literally change the story. And I think it's a big piece of people who teach mindset work um, don't teach the language piece, which is critical because when you speak it, it actually is a deeper integration to the change. Um, but you really have to speak your new story, right? So like in the sequence, I said, money comes easily and frequently was my new story that was bullshit in 1990, whatever year I made that up. I mean, you feel like you're lying because it's not true because the result's not there. But then one day it just is true. So it is the strengthening your you know, strength in God when you would get all this because you know we both have health and uh, fitness backgrounds. But that story is critical to speak out loud. And I don't think enough people speak their new story, speak to the new truth. Because in the beginning, especially the people close to you, they know that you're kind of, you know, lying. You're making it up. Like it, money doesn't come easily to a lot of you. Um, so when you say it, it's awkward. And when you sell, it's awkward. 
right? Versus just saying, I'm amazing at sales and money comes all the time to me. I mean, you got to start speaking that and then one day it's just going to happen. So that is where your new belief system will come in. Now, a more forced way to do it, and it's one of the activities we give you in the workbook, is to do the T, -T chart. And then what you do with the negative of the things that you're, you're noticing you say, um, and this is always good to do with your coach, which by the way, we are all coaches around here for you, is to take the negative and make it into a positive but future tense. And then you're just changing it so that every time you, you hear or, or sense yourself um, thinking something negative, you already have the response and the story of how you're going to say it. So there is some activity to it that I think is when that activities helped a lot of people um, is just do a basic T chart on old thinking, old beliefs and what your language and new story should be. So that's some of the stuff that's in the book. And again, you just go to the store to get it. And uh, it's a huge part of those of you that are really going to be serious about our 21 days. There's a lot that's in here um, that we're going to be talking about. How do you uh, get rid of the noise? How do you do start, stops, continues? Um, how, how do you do a lot of this planning of your life? So excited for that. Again, um, I don't know if we even have a reg page yet for, uh, well, actually, we do have a reg page. It's going to be for our broadcast. We're going to do it at 12 noon on the 15th and uh we're gonna do new year new you on our broadcast at noon so thomas and steve they just go register again for this call right yep i believe that's at uh asklaurel.com uh, i'll double check that real quick but yeah if you've already registered for this you'll you'll we'll get information about it if you've not yet done so you can sign up and you will automatically get uh put into it yeah and so, laura yeah. i want to come back to something that you mentioned around um attitudes and specifically attitudes around time. A lot of people, um, you know, they're excused. And, and as, as one of my coaches says, um, no one cares how good your excuses are. Um, it's still an excuse, but I don't have time to do sales calls. I don't have time to do marketing. I don't have time to do these things, right? Because we're busy fulfilling. We're busy moving papers from one side of the desk to the other and, and calling it work. And we all have done it. We've all, you know, we all still do it to some extent. Maybe Laurel does, and she's much better at it than the rest of us. But the rest of us still find ourselves like, where did those two hours go? I didn't actually accomplish anything because I was busy, you know, thumbing through a, a magazine that I call work because it happens to be in my industry, right? Um, but how do you create time and how do you change your attitude around time? And it, going along with what, what you have in the, in the workbook, I use these four questions on with all of my clients when they say they don't have enough time. It's one of the core things that I do. And, and this can be around your thoughts too. The first question is, is what I'm about to do going to make me money? Mm -hmm. Right. You have to ask yourself that question. If it's not making you money, you have to think about whether or not it's worth your time to do it. Number two is what I'm about to do going to serve my purpose, right? Because there are some things that serve our purpose, whether it's spiritual, or whether it's growth, or whether it's meeting more people, or whether it's developing, or whether it's changing the world, right? Serve it. Your purpose is really important. You can call it your why. You can call it your religion, right? Elon Musk wants to, you know, have colonized interplanetary, the interplanetary world. That's his purpose. And what does he do to do it? He puts people on rocket ships and in electric cars, and that's how he makes his money. So those are your first two questions. Is it going to make me money? Is it going to serve my purpose? If the answer is yes to those things, you're on the right track. Question number three, does what I'm about to do need to be done by me? Mm -hmm. And most of us do work that there is somebody faster, cheaper, and better at than we are. And that could be cleaning your house. That could be doing your dishes. That could be fulfilling on your products or services. That could be uh, doing your marketing. That could be up updating your website or building your, your landing pages and tripwires and, and um, eBooks and, and things like that. Does it need to be done by you? Right. If the answer is no, there are people out there that will fulfill it for as little as $5. Don't worry about the dollar amount. Worry about this, what the real need is in your business. Does it make you money? Does it serve your purpose? Does it need to be done by you? Those three things will make you 20% more effective in pretty much everything you do. Yep. And that's not scientific. That's just, that's just real life. We just know that. Question number four, does what I'm about to do need to be done at all? 
There are a number of things we do every day that don't serve us, don't serve our clients, don't make our money, don't make us money, don't serve our purpose. We just do them because we're used to doing them. If you go through that exercise for a couple of days, just write down, I'm about to look at this website. All right. If it's whatever, CNN, that goes in the category number four. You don't need to look at CNN's website. I don't care what's going on in the world for the next Especially 90 to 120 days till you get, until you guys start making money and feeling good about it. You don't, it doesn't matter if what's going on in Kazakhstan. It doesn't affect your life. Um, even if you live in Kazakhstan, it might not affect your life. Um, I'm researching how to do a, um, a landing page. Okay. Serves your purpose. Makes, does it need to be done by you? Likely not. You could probably pay somebody $10 to build that landing page that will be at least as good as the crappy one you're going to build because you have no skills to do it. So I would recommend those four questions. It goes right along with the workbook. I have that workbook. Um, and I think it's really, it creates time and money for my clients. So now I'm free and they don't dodge my calls because now they have time for that as well. Right. Absolutely. So again, I think we've given you some great, I'm going to say activities to do, um, just to nail it. Like it has to be something. Uh, and I guess I'm going to speak to time is there are people who say it could take, you know, a month, a year. I don't even know. Cause I don't believe it. Uh, I think it's a decision. It's literally, I am done and you're done. Like you identify your negative thinking, you have your new story, your new conversation, and then you surround yourself you know, which is a huge part of our community. It's just a decision and you're done. That doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to be perfect at it. Like you're going to slip up and you're going to, you know, go back to some old thinking, but with more people around you and more accountable people around you, which is why masterminding is so powerful, they're going to remind you, right? And they're going to, and, and if the more that people know about what you're wanting to shift, the more that we're going to remind you to not say that. Um, I mean, we play fun games. We've had fun, fun masterminds where, you know, if people do revert back or do say something, um, they get fined, you know, $5, $10. I mean, I got some mastermind groups who did $50, $100. And the whole goal was to actually put together a big dinner fund. So when they all physically got together at the big table, they had a, a big dinner, you know, a big dinner party on the fund. Um, but, you know, we've had people really put together some interesting barter, you know, I'm say bartering, but betting, but pretty big stakes to, uh, to get some behavior to shift. And when it matters, it will change. And I think I just gotta, you know, that's when it matters, you'll change. When you are sick of not making money. Um, I mean, we have led you, that's my, probably my favorite saying, uh, my favorite slide with that horse, you know, we've led you to the knowledge. We can't make you think, we can't make you do it. Right. Um, you, you're gonna have to just do the activities or just immerse yourself deeply in in the community. Um, the fastest way I know how to make you millionaires is hang out with us. And I know I say that and it sounds sarcastic. It is so true. What we do, how we make decisions. I mean, some of my highest level clients, I mean, why, what they like is just to be a fly on the wall in high level conversations, in negotiated conversations. How does it all work? Um, I know that because I'm going to, I'm starting to announce this whole small business. And if it's, if it's going to have to be a class action lawsuit against the counties, then that's probably where we're going to go. But I'm going to lead it with a vengeance to support small businesses. I mean, regardless, I want to put the, the health part of it aside and just say, can small business make it financially? And uh, it's just a, it's a decision to move. And I think a lot of you, you you got to make decisions and then start the action towards that result and stop, you know. I got a journal for four hours and I got to go meditate and <laughs> got to go do some therapy. Like none of that stuff's really going to work. So just get to it and help. let us help you make some money. Some of you have been to this marketplace over and over and you still haven't done the activity. And uh, quite frankly, I know Thomas and Adam are tired of telling you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 patiently I, waiting. I, 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 lo I love helping, but it, you know, for some people, you overcomplicate it. You just overcomplicate it. So whatever, Thursday was Thanksgiving. But while we were getting, we didn't go out, right? It was just me, my wife, and my mother-in-law. I put a turkey in. I watched a little football. It's not a, you know, a great sales day, quote unquote, although a ton of online companies made a ton of money on Thanksgiving. And that's something, Laura, that we talked about at the, at the last one, and especially Friday. But I took 45 minutes and I went through my phone and I said, happy Thanksgiving to somewhere, I don't know, 200 people. And we all have those 200 people. 
what did it lead to? It led to a lot of people. Now I'm more top of mind, but a lot of people said, oh, thank you. That's so great. Great to hear from you. What are you doing today? We're sticking close to home, cooking a bird. Awesome. What are you doing? Same, you know, blah, 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 COVID, COVID. But I now have five appointments on the calendar right. over the next, over this week, um, one this afternoon and then the rest of the week, because I started a conversation that had nothing to do with my business. Right. It had to do with happy Thanksgiving. And you could do that on Friday. You could go out and send a happy Friday text to 10 people you haven't talked to in a while or 10 people in your target market. Or you could go onto Facebook and go to your Facebook and say, I haven't seen that person in a while. Send them a, a message. Happy Friday. I hope you're doing well. Saw you on Facebook. Just was thinking about you. That yeah. is not scary at all. Right. The worst thing that could, they could happen is that they don't see it. If they actually see it, they're going to be like warm and fuzzy and feel good about you and be like, that's cool. And they're going to ask you a question back. And now you're in a conversation that becomes an ask, tell, ask. You don't have to go in and be like, I'm going to sell them this essential oil, this vacuum cleaner, this MLM, this wine, this right. health club, health package this coaching package you go in saying hey how the hell are you right yeah and it's so easy to reach people and and so don't overthink it just think i want to talk to as many people as i can and it's yeah. going to lead to money it can't not and i would challenge those of you you know who didn't work on thanksgiving didn't do a little something but even more so didn't do anything the friday after thanksgiving as to questioning what are you really working towards? Because at the end of the day, if you're working towards what it is you want to do, you don't mind getting up at 530 on a Saturday morning to work on your project, not because you have a two month old keeping you up, but because it's what you want to do and get you to where you want to be. Right. So if you're that person who on a Friday after, you know, Friday Thanksgiving thought, well, you know, it's the holiday, you know, I can't be doing anything right now. That is the mindset you need to change because at the end of the day, if you're not excited to hop up and get to work on what it is you're doing, that, that is the mindset shift that you need to, to look at and take. Yep. We're never off. I mean, you can say, you know, right. just as an entrepreneur, you have a, you have a life, you have, you know, your personal and professional life gets very integrated. We teach you to get it integrated versus like keeping it separate. And a lot of you work really hard to keep it separate. And if that's retraining your family, then you're going to have to retrain your family. I'm going to have to do that. So, um, do, 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 try to sell Laurel's kids book. So we put the links into the um, chat box there. We'll go ahead and do that one more time. So you all can see not only the, the expression of your power book that we talked about earlier, but we really have some ripping good deals in the store that would love to have everyone take a look at. A lot of good stuff in there uh, for holidays and then again also for the affiliates um you do have the ability to sell the uh workshop ticket at that reduced special price for the rest of the month so i put those links in there as always if you have questions we'll go ahead and put my email in there as well too thomas.holland at askiws.com we'll be happy to answer any questions or assist as needed yep and again godwin uh congratulations uh just a little marketing for you what did you yes. sell like what were the things sold? Oh yeah, so I reached out to one of the people that I attended that Easier Life Online course with that you presented. That was when I first met you, and then uh, we connected out of that call. And then later on during that call, that sales call, I reached out to her, and she told me about her fitness goals. She's got issues with her joints, multiple joints, back pain, so she can't really work with a personal trainer. But when I told her my background in sports physical therapy, she was really keen to want to work with me. So I did a comprehensive physical fitness assessment for her and I designed a program for her and she signed up yeah. straight up. Yes. Yeah. And then I reached out to another client of mine that I'd been training in Los Angeles before I moved to Charlotte, who had some medical issues that precluded him from training, but we always kept in touch. But during that call, I told him it was time for us to just hit the ground running. And so we went back to our three times a week again in training. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And how are you um, doing it? Uh, are you doing it virtually through Zoom? Virtually. Are... Yes. Yep. Virtually. Good. Yeah. Good. And now yeah. just, uh, it, it, I, here's, here's the next step for you is uh, to start finding some mini U's to help do some of the training so you can okay. do, you know, more and increase your price. Yes. Do some packages. For sure. Now. 
Okay. Excellent. Well, congratulations. And because of Thank you, you winning, you will have a, uh, an interview on my podcast. So this will be turned into a podcast, which will give you a little bit of introduction. So Thomas helps do that. I think we put this one up first and then right behind it. Um, Godwin, let's get to your podcast um, in the next week. And then you can just show, because they've already introduced you here, how successful you are. And then we'll have one all by yourself where you get to Thank just- Thank you so much. Wow. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Adam Thomas, thank you again, all of you. Twelve noon, uh, put it on your, uh, you know, put it in your calendar. Um, share it with other people. Our Millionaires and Training Group is still growing, and also share our podcast, which is Laurel's Real Money Talks. You can download it on any of the app stores. And uh, yes, Eileen, Pacific Standard Time, twelve noon, and that's when our New Year New You will be. So you don't even have to worry about registering other than go to ask Laurel and it'll be the 15th. And then we've got three year, three weeks. So we're going to continue to work with you all the way until January 5th, where we launch into a new year. So uh, get ready, plan your December calendars and uh, we look forward to having a huge month. Excellent. Talk to you next Thank week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Remember table folks, four o'clock, four o'clock today is laser. Yes. Cool. Nice. Thank you guys. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.